in terms of advantage, I think Sentinels are coming in to this best of three with it. Uh, bit that big momentum win from DRX. Still, again, carrying that momentum from from getting out of the group stage, right? By no means was that easy for them. They actually survived the group of death, is what everybody was rating it. Haven into Lotus into Sunset. I think those are great maps for them. What's interesting to see here is the Neon v. Neon. I don't know why, but I don't necessarily think the agent is necessarily overrated, but it more so plays down to like the duelist comfortability. So when I ran it in the season, I, I guess I just didn't give it enough time uh, just because it was like a different scenario completely to tournament-based Valorant where they've had a lot of time to actually like prep and incorporate this. Uh, we were more so operating like week by week, trying to play around strengths rather than you know weaknesses and like long-term development. Um, so at, at, at the end of the day, I think it is viable, but especially against that cipher, I feel like it is kind of like troublesome, um, where, you know, you're running into trips a lot. You don't really have like your gun out a lot. And then, you know, not having like the op 100% functional on the defense side is interesting to see as well. And I think that's where the teams kind of have been struggling a little bit with it is their attacks have been like very good. And then defense is a little more difficult to close out. You're relying on a couple other things here, but at the end of the day, even those Sentinels, you know, kind of not barely, but barely, you know, kind of a make it out of the group there. They're coming in the fourth seed as America's, okay, EDG coming in as the number one seed of China. They're underrated, to say the least. Uh, this team has a lot of potential. They have a lot of players who could just pop off and win maps. And I think that's really important in terms of firepower if we're talking about winning championships here. So at the end of the day, when I see rounds like this from Sentinels, it looks like we're back to just that, like, 2-0. Momentum being used, John calling really well, util support, trading, it's, it's, it's all looking good, where it's just so hard for everybody to play. Tens of the first blood. He had a great day today. Shishu's going to fall 5v4 here. No real way to get back into this round. Zekin can just keep going back and forth with this all just chipping away at people. It's just so difficult to deal with. Almost going to get punished there. Simon can't correct after getting dinked. Nobody's also going to fall. Hong Kong will deal with him here and go for one more. Tens of the trade. Now knows to back up. Smoggy in a situation. Sorry, it's tens. He knows to overpeak the man advantage. Smoggy now left in the 1v3 here where nothing you can really do with save. Tens is going to get the kill there. And Sentinels are going to kind of continue to throttle them on the attack of Haven. Post C split here, Sentinels are up two to seven. Main thing to consider is that Zelsus is one off of his rolling thunder. So putting that into the spawn position, the garage window, whatever it is, is going to be really, really hard uh, for EDG to deal with specifically if they don't have any alts, right? So that's the main thing that's online here. At the end of the day, I think this might be a little bit of an overcook, depending on the context of the situation. Since that John is in this garage by himself, he just took a fight on the Chichu, knocked him down to 50 HP. I think if John is pulling out of this and they retake the bomb site rather than continue to push, that they convert this round. But at the end of the day, this is what people do when they're winning and when things are going right. They're going to keep on talking. They're going to keep on coming up with ideas. Delsus just needs to make sure that that breach ult gets the window here as well and not only spawn since we're going to see a branched off kind of like two person push come out here on either side of spawn in the garage tunnel. So by no means the beginning of the end, but beginning of the end, but starting to see uh, again, maybe like the overcomplication or putting themselves in a position where, you know, they're cooking a little too hard. And they got rounds to play with, so at the end of the day, it's okay. But now, as you can see here, no, no real chance to actually play. And EGG are going to start to, you know, sniff at the fact that, you know, hey, we're still in this, it's all good. With the big C stack coming out at the start of the round, Sentinels are going to push and start to look for the Lurker. For whatever reason, Chichu is just sitting in mid with the Bulldog. I have no idea why you would ever be in that position on an Anti-Eco. If you have a Ghost, a Deagle, I'm not really, you know, offended by it. But a Bulldog, w without a trip for your back on C... Very interesting to say the least. 5v4 here. John on 1 HP is going to continue to flank and potentially apply pressure. Center in a position where they can kind of like pump form and make a bunch of noise. So I can see here the wall is thrown. Smoke TP used. John sitting and waiting looking for a wrapper. Zekin activating the bulldog that Chichu gave them. Hong Kong trying to trade. Only good for one. John, slow, very slow containment here, taking his time, trying to make sure they're on the same page. Perfect timing there on the peak. Second for three, Sentinels with a thrifty win. It, it looks like it's all over. I'm very confident in saying that this might be one of the stupidest plays I've ever seen come out in Valorant. So with dodging Saucy's Hunter's Fury, 
no one's actually gonna fall, but a lot of damage is gonna go out there. He's gonna do 160, 80 to two players. Just, just watch this fake. But no recon, nothing. Rolling thunder, entire breach kit, and a hunter's fury to go in. First blood in the way of EDG. Simon dies now. 4v4, utils used on C, they know. How come just, just Yoru cloning garage here? Both initiator alts used terribly. John spraying back at the runaway area of C. 2v4 now for Sentinels. And we have a potential comeback on the lines here for EDG being able to leverage these alts and win this round. But they just shit themselves and just waste it. John on three for the round. Saucy cleans it up. Sentinels go to 11. And, and it's like, when you're sitting here watching this, you're like, how is this team even in this position? How are they here? And I mean, <laughs> can you just make it any easier? I mean, holy shit, dude. Perfect paranoia back up here from 10. Saucy gets shit on. Double hold. Do anything together. What is this back and forth? It's just so easy for him. Now he just holds up the blobfish, and you guys are all so mad. Check out the refight coming out here from Sentinels. Paranoia, three players pushing through secret. Trades go very heavily in the way of EDG. Three for one there, 2v4 now. Saucy looking to equalize and make a play here. These guys are going full audible with the reloads. So Chichu's just looking at nothing. No idea what he's looking at. Saucy's unable to get another one. Gets put down to 10 HP here. John is repositioned all the way back to be able to flank here and take this space, which is just huge to see. Saucy making a bunch of noise. Through secret, moving back over there. Nobody really doesn't know where he could be. He could have snuck into the bomb site. Could still be secret. Now they're in a position where they're stuck in the bomb site. A lot to consider. A lot of confusion. Look at Saucy making the noise in the tree room for John to make a play. EDG are still aware of this, thinking it's coming from spawn or pit, but they don't really know how John's repositioned in this round. 2v2 now. John with an insane land phantom moment. Molly's the push, looking at the wrap or the or the heaven push there. Smoggy reveals his position. Usually good for these. Unable to clean it up. And John is looking vintage here. Cinema. With the way this started. Rounds like this again and again and again. It looks like Gen G all over again. It looks like Sentinels are just in positions where they are consistently converting advantages or even settings. Tens here getting a little overzealous. Pushing through his own smoke here, trying to angle out on a lower player instead of playing the objective, which would be peeking and trading out the player near the bomb who is in a tether right now. In that time, whether he dies or not, maybe he can drop a smoke on the bomb, but at least if he does die, it's for a good cause and not dying to the supporters, right? John is playing that role here. He needs to understand that and continue to go forward. Little tunnel vision there. He's going to throw his life away for free. One for one trade comes in here. Zekin gets distracted by it now. John's moved over. He eats a bullet. Utility used here for the bomb. 1v2 left for Saucy. He drops it. Clovol coming out. Well played by EDG. And just like that, again, you give these guys just a little bit of breathing room. And just shit can start going wrong. Something we haven't discussed yet is the composition battle here. So the double controller, double initiator, no hard sentinel versus your standard fade, uh, Killjoy. The main thing that sentinels are able to kind of expose here is this ideology that they can play defense kind of however they want because they're going to be perma in the advantage in terms of information. So being it so, we could either put aggressive utility, like positions of like front B, for the A lurk or the walk up over here, denying the tree room, or we can really put it deep, like anti plant uh, mollies on C, anti plant mollies on A. We can take our time. We can either do strong side defenses, where we have three people in a position, you know, fighting with a retake on the other side, or we could do floody, where, you know, we kind of have like a 1 3 1 spread and we're kind of like going back and forth, similar to a situation in this round. Now, the main thing that you're going to run into a problem here. Against this composition is going to be the rechargeable abilities, right? So when we use two smokes for a bomb site hit, the fact that we can just have more to patch holes is insane. So a map like this, where there's a lot of like you know revolving doors and gaps that are available, the fact that someone could just drop smokes on those is really good because a lot of teams have protocols based on the fact of maybe those things being used or bomb sites being exact into, and that's what we're going to see in this round here, where when 
Sentinels are ready to go through the door here after John barely gets seen and is held and killed. When Sentinels go through here with the exec happening, the clove smoke is going to come out next. So Paranoia is going to buy time there. They're going to have to back up off of front B, regrouping towards C here. Again, no smokes online for Chichu, right? Sentinels still want to go through the door here because they think they might have lost control of Waterfall or Spawn at this point. And now the smoke is coming down, so they're not even able to get out. Zelsus is still going to get a kill onto the Rapper slash Lurker here of Chichu. And in this position, they're still just stuck on this door. Zelsus has regrouped to come help. Two kills through the spam into the tether as well. And Sentinels are just going to have to elect to save. So occasionally, these compositions in terms of situations, right, rather than things being scripted, situations can be much different for them, where if they get the opportunity to capitalize on things like that, they can. Perfect timing here with this Killjoy ult. Soon as it drops, the plant is being tapped. Look at all the counter util there from Sentinels if you wanted to try to push it. You're not getting in. We're night following you. We're in a spot where we have three, four people that are ready to shoot. John has to flank here. Huge mistake here from Tens. Absolutely monumental. He throws a smoke for the attackers to be able to play around and spam through. And instead of electing to smoke the bomb and tap it, he's going to TP up into a position like this is what I see him do in his ranked games. He just gets in a spot where he can kind of bait everybody and just clean it all up. It can't be a tendency that you have on the stage, son. How are we not smoking the bomb in this situation? Is it something to do that we have a retake wall? Where, you know, maybe that could be a part of it. I, I really doubt it. There could be a lapse in communication there where it is possible. But at the end of the day, this is a huge advantage for EDG. Not having the bomb smoked with the insecurity that they could have tapped. They're nightfall, right? They can't hear anything. They could be just sitting there sticking the bomb. So now you have one, two, maybe three, four, maybe four people sitting on this mound here and just spraying at the bomb. Now the lower players can kind of peek out and potentially get those trades. But again, Tens, huge mistake there. Second's going to die. Tens's play that he made of TPing up there isn't there anymore because he gets off. He's going to die for it. And now up 5-2 with mismanaged situations like this. Sentinels are going to fall even 6-6 on their own map pick. We have a huge overcomplication here from Sentinels. I don't know if this is too many cooks in the kitchen or whatever it ends up being. Saucy's going to get a huge reveal onto Congo here. Tether nade combo coming out for our first blood. That's our green light. That's our go. What, what are we waiting on? What, what are we sitting here waiting for to happen? The Breach hasn't used the fault line. We don't even know that the Paranoia is coming in. Get in that bomb site. If he's getting into a position like that, he wants to be the forward player, right? Usually it's not going to be a bunch of people stacked up on top of him, and if they are, they're going to be peeking off of him. So you're going to expect that C-Link, that heaven, that secret position even, knowing that, again, no one is really going to be in that bomb site there. Uh, I, don't, I don't know who called this, and I don't know why. It could have been the plan the all along is to NC, but at the end of the day, they're going to be in a position where they're going to go up down. Chichu was in a position the entire round holding A. He knows they're not really going to be going back there, at least for the time being, with the amount of commotion that's been made over towards B and C. Dora's going to cut off half the team. John's looking at the flank, not going with them. So we talked about this before watching the G2 VOD, where how many times are people going to be in positions where they're playing for a different portion of the round? And if they are going to get stunned like this, I think the only avenue after Smoggy Peaks here is to go back to B, right? We're, we ha we, you know, we don't have a lot of time, but we're at least going to have some to maybe open this door and get the bomb down. Maybe seven, eight seconds, what, however long it takes to accomplish that. But it's just overcomplicated, and we just aren't playing to win. John's going to end up doing the long rotation here. He's not even going to go through the door again. Look how fast Chichu gets here. Compared to John, John is still not even at mound yet while Chichu's in the bomb site dueling cells as he can't get his top site cross. Bomb down, pistol in the way of EDG. And it's like a totally new series. What you're going to notice in this comp is that when teams are running the Neon, Neon does not usually just sit in a spot and just hold and do nothing. Okay, Neon can act as an initiator almost where she can set up people to play in forward positions with the relay bolt and then be able to move around to front B instantly, move around back to C instantly, and, and kind of play a more passive approach where 
You could be there to punish people who are speeding up. So Simon going through all the buttons on his kit there. Thank God that Sentinels didn't fight air. They might have lost. And once they get Chichu up there, they're gone. So they're going to move and they're going to go get Proactive. Proactivity is the name of the game with a composition where you don't have a Sentinel. Okay, you need info because you don't have that utility to rely on it. So timing your Prowlers, Initiator Util, moving people around accordingly. And not just revolving around feeling the entire time. You're actually thinking hard about it. So Sentinels are going to go low and slow here, taking their time, farming orbs, looking for aggro, looking for traps, sitting and waiting. They now know that with that deep haunt being used there, it kind of makes it seem that Chichu's being in a spot where he's kind of left. So what they want to do is they want to go back and clear him. We are going to see it a lot against these no Sentinel comps, but a lot of people like to do pokes or jabs towards a direction where they're not actually going and going back like the other way where, you know, they're kind of misdirecting here for John intends to be able to walk up into B while they try to push this guy off of the A line, causing indecision and rotation here. What they don't expect is nobody to be there. He gets two with the stinger through the smoke. 3v5 now for Sentinels. They're going to have to go into the B bomb site. Being down a double man here, what are we going to do to get back in this? Simon's going to say, yo, you, know, you want to win this round? Sure, I'll just give it to you. Okay, that needs to be VOD reviewed. John's going to drop a smoke and plant here. 3v4. Are we going to group up and push something? Okay, we do have a haunt to maybe figure out where people are or aren't. How are we going to play this? Okay, Sentinels are going to look like, you know, your average Radiant ranked lobby where they're going to try to play for everything at once and not work together. Tens holding the flank. Saucy alone on the bomb site. John exploring secret. I mean, I, I, how, where, where is the trade possibility here? Where, where is the direction here? Who is talking here? I, 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 is, it, is it radio silence? Because that's what it looks like. 2-2 Two -two split here from EDG, taking their time. John barely missing this kill here. I do think that he gets this 9 out of 10 times. But at the end of the day, again, alone. No one even in a position to capitalize off of his contact, whether it was a death or a kill. Saucy has to look at the spot that he was in now, sitting, waiting. Weird peak coming in there from Chichu. Nobody cleans it up. 4v1 here for 10s. Gets 2. Not trying to bait, but unfortunately is again. Really hard situation to convert here on half HP. Unable to get the spam. EDG win the bonus. And Sentinels are in trouble now. I can't even tell what Sentinels are doing at this point anymore. They've won three rounds in a row. Okay, the first one, EDG made some crazy push play that Sentinels punished. The second one, they abused the ults that they had online. And the third one was a save for EDG. Now we're back on even footing. And we're in the position where it's not even looking close. I, I, I have no idea what the idea here is in this round. There are so many moving parts at once. First of all, okay, this, right? Zelsus is just Cancun right now. He's just sitting on the beach, you know, drinking a pina colada. Saucy is solo using his entire kit in the door room while three people sit around outside kind of waiting for something to happen. So with no latch, smokes are going to drop. Paranoia is going to be traded. Everybody's going to sit and wait, but now John's in a position where he's breaking the door with no help. So we talked about this last time on Lotus. If you're going to break the door yourself, don't be exposed to it. He's going to instantaneously be punished by a person playing secret. In a no Sentinel comp, there's going to be someone there. I would guarantee 9 out of 12 rounds on defense. You know, if there isn't some crazy push play or something like that, that's just going to be a default spot that a lot of people are going to revolve around. If they're getting punished, maybe they shift to heaven. So again, saucy kit dumping for no one to play around. Hanking just overheating here. Now centers are going to get ready to go. One corner not cleared. All of our initiator utility is in tree for the initiator to use and no one else. Tether. Baiting. Saucy unable to convert. Almost again giving it here to him. Out of ammo. Celsus finally shows up with 8 seconds left. Put into a 1v4. Nice 2k here. No time. One person's going to run at him. One person's going to run away. EDG go up to 11. And Sentinels are struggling bad. Okay, we're back on Sunset. Sentinels are in a position where they're with the double initiator. I think that this is when they're the strongest. I think that Zelsus is much more vocal and involved when he's playing a role like Breach compared to Killjoy on some of these maps. And I think it's just a really good look for them. Now, we are going to go up against this the KO Sova versus the Fade Breach. Uh, I think the Fade Breach kind of traditionally combos with the Rays, if you're looking at it um, like one-dimensionally. But we did talk about the idea of the Latch from the Prowler, the stun going out on that, and the Neon chasing it down. And you also have 
you know, opportunity for really big extension with the breach. So being able to turn something like a top mid poke into a split instantly, depending on where he can use that fault line from, you know, whatever it ends up being, okay, either side. Now, with this push play on defense that Sentinels are going to run, what's interesting to see is actually the way they play the retake. Nice and slow, trip hasn't been pinged, sitting, waiting, here's the protocol adjustment, latch, paranoia, stun, chase down, Kong Kong counter stun here, peeking, to no avail, after all this, nobody's going to make some noise to pressure market to draw them back, with resistance they're going to speed up to top mid to A, they know that this is the gap right now. John in a position, a little forward, away from his setup. He's going to hit a really nice shot here. Unable to convert this one. Uh, so on the kill of Kong Kong here, we're technically in a 5v3. I won't actually call it that just because John basically gets instantly traded. But 4v3 situation here, you know, what do we got? Okay, Neon Sun Online. We'll have some Omen Smoke soon. Uh, double Flash here. Tether, Fault Line, and Haunt going to eventually come up in this situation. We just need to sit and wait and get ready to retake together here. We can use Zek in his bait since he's 1 HP. He can toss his Ghost away to Saucy or Celsius or Tens to Raid Boss him. I think those are all great options here. One Flash being used. Fault Line now back online. Sitting, waiting for an overextension. And now, the Clown Car. Just one person after one person, they keep appearing. No utility used. No ghost traded onto a player with more HP. And they're just not making it hard at all for EDG. Finally able to pick up a gun. Dart flash, sitting and waiting. Great patience. Fragment still online if they need to use it. Basically a direct hit there with it. I mean, holy shit. 1v1. Nobody cleans it up, and that is a huge pistol round to win on map three. On the bonus, um, the buy really isn't impressive for EDG, and they don't have some criminal level ult to win it. You know, with neural theft, no, no duelist ult, no initiator ult, nothing to really make it hard. We really need to think long and hard if we're Sentinels on if we're going to make a decision. Even though John gets eviscerated here and didn't even have a chance to shoot back, I think he needs to understand the context of this more. So being in the position that this side has been smoked, it, what it seems to me is that this lane is a huge red flag. It's the only thing that they're playing for. It's not like you're feigning the fact that when you pop this one way, you could be over here making a play, right? It's smoked off. They're sitting here waiting for you to peek. And look how early into the round it is, right? It's not like 20, 30 seconds left on the clock where he's peeking to, like, get info. Okay, we're, we're in the pretty good setup here where we don't need to do much. And again, he is going to get his head ripped off there. But, I mean, it, it's just going to make this round so much more harder. Second, trying to go early. He's good for one. Uses his other slide there, weirdly enough. Chichu separated. And look at the post plant. Just idea coming out here from EDG already. Smoggy is already in a position where he can capitalize off Chichu's potential death. And he does that exactly. Ten's just instantly trying to TP and run away, or get closer to his teammates there. Needs to understand the clock. Does not need to rush that situation. Saucy sitting, defusing. Ends up getting off there. Second had him the entire time. Should have used the wall if he could have. 2v1 now, wall being used, tap, looking for a peek, spray goes through up the mini-map, EDG bonus, and, I mean, it's code red for Sentinels. Sentinels won three out of the last 12 rounds on Lotus, and they started up 5-1. to one. They're now going to lose the pistol, into the anti-eco, into the bonus, and they're going to win this thrifty, mainly off of Zekin's ult here. Take a look at the investment coming in from EDG. Pistol, 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 pistol. Very interesting to see with the fact of the amount of money that they have they could have bought this round. And I think that they caught Sentinels off because Sentinels were running a 4-1 anti-KO ult set up towards B for 10s to be able to play off of. He was the solo B player. They switch it up. They get the bomb down. So they actually caught him off here in the sense that they did eco. If they did not eco and call a eco strat, they probably would have lost because Sentinels were prepared for the strat they had cooked up with KO. They're going to get the bomb down. Look at what's in play here. One trip, two trip. Camera. Okay, what's online in the other position? Double flash, double shock, recon, drone, Hunter's Fury. Okay, KO ult, paranoia, re 
I mean, they have literally everything. There isn't even a piece of Sentinel utility on the flank. It's on the entire bomb site. It's it's like he's defending it. Oh, I, is is this gonna get solved, or are people gonna win champs off of this abuse? Drone used early, tagging Zek and slowing him down. Look at the instant reposition. Nobody, he's gone, dude. I'm going to ult. Try to get him off first. I'll get next. Saucy tripping over the uh, cipher utility there. Tens finally realizes he can smoke the bomb. All has to be used a little early. I mean, gets so close there, defusing it. Another tap comes through, dying. Trades going the way of EDG. Zelsus trying to get it down, no good. EDG technical thrifty there on the behalf of them electing to save rather than buy guns. I don't want to chalk this up to luck, but sometimes when I see stuff like this, it makes me think of how random a game of Valorant can be where the tiniest of decisions or timings can just completely decide around. Not necessarily that it's a bad thing. Again, it's more so just fascinating over everything. So I want you to pay attention to when Kong Kong peeks out of B main here, what was happening for everybody on Sentinels in the round. I'm gonna try to slow it down so we can actually see it. So with the Nightfall coming out here, the Diffuse has come through where the tap has come out. So watch the bars, okay, or like the, the X-ray through the wall here of like what's going on. So Tens is in the middle of moving because he's casting a smoke. John has jiggled left. Zekin is taking a tag out and Saucy takes a tether out. I mean, this is literally, lit, literally perfect timing. It could not have gotten any better. The two people that were in a position to hold and make a play aren't for literally half a second. And the guys that you peek both have utility. You can never make this stuff up. This might never happen again, unironically. Like, never again. Sounds like a huge problem here with momentum. They've used two timeouts and eight rounds. They were in a position where they converted at least one round off of it recently. And now to be able to win this back, this half back, this is it right here. Money isn't at zero, but it's definitely getting low, especially when you're going win for loss, win for loss in the uh, the rounds here where your loss bonus keeps on getting reset. So again, it just happened for them where they just uh, lost a round, then they won it, and now they're getting ready to lose a round again. So it's going to be really hard to get back into this game. This half is basically going to be over. Second late on the fault line here. Double entry. Turn it triple. And John and Tens are just like, oh, shit. Uh, we should probably just end up saving. But, I mean, EDG are just, just taking the breath away from them. Like, they are so uncomfortable. They're tripping over themselves. It's so hard to get back into this game when EDG just slap you in the face like that. Round after round after round. Advantage retake for Sentinels. 5v4. I mean, please, Jesus Christ, convert it. Get these last two rounds. Bring this back to 4-8. Win the pistol. Actually have a game and be able to make it close. We're going to see it again. Where people are not going to be peeking with Celsius's utility. Okay, Hunter's Fury coming out here. Not really sure why you don't expect a push in a man disadvantage when a Soval is being used, but, you know, that's a different conversation. No breach utility coming out. There it is in the air there. So no breach utility coming out just yet. Zekin still peeking early and dying, trying to dodge the ult. Who's the person peeking off the breach util? It's Celsius. The, the literal last person who should be doing that. He gets knocked down. Tether misses. I mean, what a round from that guy. And Tens is just on a box, just sitting and waiting. He just didn't even have a chance to play out this round. They can't even get into the bomb site to retake it. It, it isn't close. Sentinels are going to fall into lowers here, losing to EDG again. This map pool, I favored them very much, in my opinion. Just unable to close out rounds that they normally do. And we see a lot of first death problems today. Everybody in the negative but Zekin. He still did have 11, but at the end of the day, I think he did his job more than anybody on this team. We just saw people like Saucy, Zelsus, and John M unable to convert and show up like they normally do and able to close things out. Smoggy, a player who has MVP potential on this roster, extremely quiet today. I, I think that, not necessarily that they had them where they wanted to, but they definitely had the opportunity to close it out here specifically on Lotus being up 5-1 and ending up losing the game in a dramatic fashion there where they ended up uh, losing 8-13. to Sunset was a little closer technically at the end, 6-13 to here, but at the half it was 10-2. to 
Okay, and then they won the pistol, and then they won the force, putting them down 12 to 2. I mean, this is pretty much a 13 0. At the end of the day, the only reason that Sentinels got a few more rounds here is because EDG knew that they could just let them get a couple rounds. They could farm four to five ults, and then they could just end the game at any time they wanted to. So they're looking very dominant. And uh, again, I think that um, if they keep this up, maybe this is like a huge momentum or confidence win for them that they can just really just turn up this tournament and actually have a chance to go all the way with it here. Sentinels in an hour are going to have a really hard match against Fnatic. Um, the lower bracket in this tournament has been unreal how stacked it is. I mean, again, you have G2 going out instantly without even winning a map. DRX, Heretic, Sentinels, Fnatic, G2 down here. So brutal. EDG have impressed me, definitely. This Trace game, not anything too crazy there. It was more of an expectation that I had over anything. But they have top three secured right now with Leviathan. And I think that this is a really good matchup for EDG specifically. Leviathan, I don't know how I fully feel about it just yet. But, I mean, this win here was monstrous as well. This is going to be a really good game to cover, and I'm excited to do it. Um, but I, I think that it's been crazy, the results. I've been really caught off by a lot of them and, and surprised overall. Obviously, my pickups are destroyed. Uh, I don't even want to take a look at what the points are looking like. But at the end of the day, this tournament has been really rewarding to watch and extremely entertaining. So I hope you guys feel the same way. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so before you head out. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Thank you so very much. I will see you in the next one. T-Dog out of here. Deuces.